any typical power plant is going to have at least three of these cabinets. These three here on this side, these we're going to have one cabinet for each generator set. Along the top, we have these little enunciator lights that come on to give us warnings of problems that are engine related. This row on the bottom are for the individual generator sets. And then we're going to have some method of monitoring. In the case of this one, it has a nice little touch screen here where we can see RPM oil pressure, or we could look at generator details, how much uh, apparent power is it putting out, uh, what each leg of the three-phase system is putting out, our frequency. We can get our details off it. So this is just another version, a more modern version. Then we have our control panel that provides us operation, whether we run an auto mode, which is very typical, manual mode. Uh, sometimes we do need to lock the generator out for service so we can perform um, the routine maintenance. This right here tells us this is attached to the bus. There's large metal plates at the back of this, these cabinets that attach each one up. And this is the control for this breaker here. This is what's going to take the power output of a generator and put it on the power bus before it goes out to the community. So depending on the number of engines you have in any power plant, you're going to have one cabinet each for each generator to provide monitoring as well as control of the system. Next, which is very typical, this one here has a panel for our variable frequency drives on our coolant fans and then we have our main feeder breaker which goes out to the community. This is what attaches to those large metal plates in the generator cabinets and actually sends that power out to the village. And then last, any typical power plant you're going to have a master control section. The master control section has enunciators these are powerhouse related. Anytime you get red lights on, alarms on here, it's going to shut the system down. Then we have a form of, this is called a SCADA system. It gives us an overview of our power plant. Um, then we have our totalizing meters, because oftentimes in, in situations where we have high demand, you might have one or more generators that are working in concert with one another. So we need to be able to look and see the total power being put out onto the uh, feeder. As well as our monitoring situation, we have what are called PLCs or Programmable Logic Controllers, which are industrial computers. In the cabinet in here we have two of them. You have a primary one that you run off of all the time. This controls the automated function, you know, which brings us to our generator sets. Why we do need to follow a certain procedure to shut these down so those generators don't try to start automatically. So you have two PLCs within this cabinet. Uh, this is called a SCADA system. Uh, this is usually used remotely outside of the power plant so it can be controlled. You can actually start, stop engines. We can change the, uh, whether it's running in manual mode or auto mode. Uh, so we can control all aspects of the operation using this system. The authority, they can actually control things from Anchorage. Not only that, but if there is a problem, they can actually reload the program and the PLC from Anchorage too, or anywhere they have an internet connection. So. You know, some of the other facilities, different things you see in this control area, these are cable trays. This is where the control section is connected to the generators out in the power plant. You'll, you'll notice all these other appurtenances in here. We have, these are cable trays here that are above us that are connecting our control section with our actual engine room, the generator room. But also, you'll notice these other red conduits. These are all associated with the fire suppression system. And the main panel for it is over here. 
So in the case of an emergency or we have a fire, we should see a fire alarm on our master control and we should have some indication here as well that there is in fact a fire. Why don't we go and take a look at the generator room. Here's a typical generator room inside any typical power plant. We have the same number of engine generator units that match our cabinets in our control section. If we look over here, we can see we have a large tank up on the wall. This is our expansion tank that is used to uh, hold the glycol and the cooling system on the engines. We also have a couple of big coolant manifolds here that are wrapped in the silver insulation. The one on top is for hot coolant that is leaving the engine. The lower one is for coolant that is much lower in temperature entering the engine to keep the cooling system completely filled. If we look over here, in front of each of the generator sets, we actually have a couple of batteries. These are 24 volt systems, so we have two 12 volt batteries. Above those batteries, you'll notice we have battery chargers. These are used not only to start the generators up, but also to maintain the program in the PLC in the case of a power outage. You know, if it happens to be powers down for more than a couple of days, we can still rely on the program and the computers being maintained by those batteries. All right. And then walking over here, we actually have a fuel system. We have a day tank that holds the fuel for the engines to operate. Uh, this particular one, we have a fuel control system. This would work in conjunction with an intermediate tank from the tank farm to uh, maintain a level of fuel so we never run out. This device right next to it, this is called an oil blender system. Uh, what we do with a blender system is we take the oil, when the oil is changed in the engines, it's fed into this hopper and then it's filtered and then sent back and mixed with fuel, leaving the day tank to go burn the engine. So we don't have a lot of waste oil on property. Another thing with diesel engines, modern day, uh, is the greater use of what we call heat recovery systems. Uh, typically 60% of the heat generated by burning fuel in a diesel engine is thrown out. We don't even use it. But by using heat recovery systems like this, we can recapture some of that heat, some of that money that goes into actually burning fuel in the engine, making it run. We can capture more of that heat energy. So diesel engines generate a lot of, a lot of heat. And the cooling system in the generator or in our powerhouse is not sufficient to remove all of that heat. So we do rely on ambient temperature, maintaining a particular ambient temperature for two reasons. One, it's not only more comfortable for the operators that I have to work in here, but also to remove ambient heat from the engines as well as heat to power plant. For that reason, we have thermostatically controlled fans that will operate at different times uh, to help maintain a balance of a good temperature balance within the power plant. Well, that is a typical power plant. Those are the different components you'll find in every power plant. 